The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant released new footage taken inside a containment vessel of the number one reactor. For the first time, the video clearly shows there is water at the bottom of the vessel. Last Friday, Tokyo Electric Power Company sent its first remote-controlled survey robot into the number one reactor, which underwent a meltdown in 2011. The robot came to a halt inside the reactor. On Wednesday, the utility sent in a second one. The second robot moved along a passageway around the inner wall of the containment vessel in a clockwise direction. It recorded the damage and measured radiation levels. This is video taken by the robot. The camera looks down through slits in the floor of the passageway. The black section is the water. It's reflecting light from the robot. Judging from the reflection, the water surface appears to be about 2.8 meters above the bottom of the vessel. This tallies with the results of past readings. The footage shows severe deterioration to the exterior of various equipment. The surface of the passageway is badly rusted. TAPCO officials say the coating on the metal surfaces may have peeled off due to extreme heat when the meltdown occurred.
Japanese government officials are trying to find ways to deal with a demographic downturn. The population is aging and shrinking. And new data reveals a steady decline. NHK World's Moshe Komata reports. Official with the Internal Affairs Ministry estimate that as of October 2014, Japan's population stood at 127.1 million. They say it's a 0.70% drop from the previous year. And it's a fourth straight year of decline. The data reveals children under 14 account for a little less than 13% of the population, hitting a record low for the second straight year. The number of people aged 65 or over makes up a record high 26% of the population. And the number of people considered working age is about 61%, a significant decrease. The crisis is hitting rural area the hardest. Government officials in Wakayama Prefecture, central Japan, have seen more people moving out than moving in for nearly two decades. Officials plan to introduce the program designed to lure in a younger generation. They are offering allowances to young couples to help them settle. We hope more households will come and live here to raise their children. We aim to strengthen depopulation measures. Many local governments across Japan have taken similar measures. Results of an NHK survey suggest roughly $16 billion have been allocated to such programs. The money will be used to revitalize local economies, keep residents from moving away, and encourage more people to settle. Some local governments have been forced to scale back or discontinue existing programs in order to fund these measures. An economist is optimistic about the country's future population. He says the most important thing is to boost financial assistance to help families with children. Municipalities should reduce unnecessary spending and allocate the allowance for child support programs. Such measures will help stop the population decline. Officials with the Internal Affairs Ministry say the country's population will likely continue to decline for some time. Motani says the pressing issue is how governments will balance budgets for child raising with other important costs. Moshe Komata, NHK World. I should say something about Fukushima and also Chernobyl, but certainly now Fukushima and infertility. The, the, the truth is that infertility has been in, uh, increasing in the world for the last 30 or 40 years, probably because of all the radionuclides that, are that, that people are exposed to originally from the weapons fallout, uh, and not the global atmospheric mm -hmm. testing, and then from Chernobyl, and now from Fukushima. And there are things that people there can do to, to try and minimize, minimize this. Uh, but the main thing is to get away from the radiation but, and because they, what they have to realize is that this, this is an invisible, uh, it's an invisible attack on, on the human race. It's something that will, will appear over the next 20, 30, 40 years and, and its cause will not really be investigated. So we also predict, I also predict, on, uh, as a result of this ECRR model, that there will be significant increases in infertility in Japan as a result of this accident and this is quite terrible and in, any, in many ways it's more terrible than the cancer in adults because it's, it, it's destroying children who, who could have been born but now will not be born and some of those who are going to be born from our studies in the Middle East will have horrifying deformities and, and will obviously in an advanced uh, country like Japan will be aborted uh, 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 you know, um, uh, clinically, clinically aborted before they get born, so the, the birth rate will fall. Um, what did the data show until now, before Fukushima? Oh yes, the the data has been showing that um, that the birth rate, uh, that the that the the, the 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 sperm count in men has has been falling drastically. Uh, there was a very important study done in Jerusalem a few years ago which showed that Israeli men had, had very low sperm count and that over the previous 10 years it had fallen by a significant amount. And the, and the authors of that study said that if it continued to fall at the same rate, by the year 2020, that they would be totally infertile and the Israelis would, would have no more children. 
It's as bad as that. It's as bad as that. And we are so we're, we're now, as a result of Fukushima, introducing a huge load more of this stuff into the atmosphere. But I have to say that it will mostly affect the Japanese, as far as I can tell. It will mostly be a Japanese affair, but that doesn't make it any better. And where does the radiation uh, come in Israel? Come from in Israel? In Israel, it comes from the uh, use of, of uranium weapons. The massive, massive, massive use of uranium weapons by the uh, by the various military. Um, Invaders, I suppose you would call them, the U.S., the, the, the Allies, they call them, uh, used hundreds and maybe thousands of tons of uranium weapons. Um, there's a new weapon now which uses uranium, and we've made measurements in the hair of the mothers in Fallujah uh, and mothers of children with congenital anomalies. Uh, and this study hasn't been published yet, but what we have found is significant man-made uranium in the hair of these mothers, which is almost certainly the cause of the congenital anomalies. And where you have congenital anomalies, of course, you also have infertility. It's just that with, with, in Fallujah, they, they don't have sufficient uh, medical methodology to, 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 to pick up these, these uh, deformities before they're born. They don't have all the ultrasound stuff and so on, but in the West they probably find these things and abort them early. So that's why we have these big increases. But the increases are associated with an environmental exposure to uranium. That's the point. And, and you have to remember that Fukushima contains probably 2,000 tons of uranium. 2,000 tons. Chernobyl had 200 tons, and 50 tons of it exploded. So, so all the things that Alexei Yablokov is talking about is a consequence of two, uh, 50 tons of uranium in Europe with a bit of with fission products, of course. But in Fukushima, there's more than that. There's, in principle, if the whole lot goes up, it's, it's a massive amount of uranium. And are there some uh, long-term consequences after 20, uh, 30 years, 40 years? Uh, it doesn't go come. away. What, 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 what Alexei says is true. It doesn't go away. Um, what Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like th throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children, and they pass it on to their children, and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who work for the British Army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s. And uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren. And what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations. But the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations. So the normal genetic idea that you, you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong, and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of the, of the nuclear war, all the, we, we just have radiation-resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you.